when Hurricane Sandy hit and most people started looking for a safe place to hunker down, our reporters were heading out into the eye of the storm. And tonight our Lauren Wonko takes us back to the way things were on that night in Cape May. My conditions here are just going from that to worse so bad that I'm just trying to do everything I can to keep my feet planted on the pavement here. Check out this street sign behind me. We are on Beach Avenue. We are on the street right now, but as you can see, the street has turned into a beach. We moved farther north to Ocean County and reported on pure destruction. Destruction that's still so vivid for Tom's River resident Kathy Chakala. Just knew that I was trapped and I just figured I don't know if I'm ever going to get out of here. I just didn't think I would. The night of the storm, Kathy fell asleep on the couch. Her husband woke her in a panic. I went to turn around to get my feet on the ground and my knees were in water. Kathy was surrounded by rising floodwaters. She felt like a prisoner in her own home. What are you thinking at that point? Screaming. <laughs> Screaming, and there I was just screaming on the couch. Desperate, the couple was searching for a way, any way out. And boats were just like kind of floating down the street, so we were thinking we could find a boat and jump in a boat and get out. But there was there was no way. There was no way. Kathy and her husband huddled together throughout the night, soaking wet, freezing, and wide awake. I can't go to sleep. If I go to sleep, I'll drown. I was just so afraid to go to sleep. Finally, the couple heard a loud knock on the window. There was a uh, a guy in a wet, full wetsuit at the window, and he said, are you 321 Maria? And we said, yes. He said, well, gather some of your things together because I'm going to get you out of here. And that was like, I just couldn't believe that that was going to happen. I just could not believe that we were finally going to get out of this house. She climbed onto a front loader. Her view of the devastation was similar to this one. And just looking around at the things that had happened and, and the boats all over the place and people's belongings all over the place. It was so sad. The next morning, Kathy returned home. Everything was ruined by the floodwaters. Emotionally drained, she sold the home to her son, who spent months making repairs. He transformed the storm-ravaged house into a home again. Meantime, Kathy and her husband are building a new home nearby, a home they say will be sandy-proof. They hope to finally move in by next winter. In Tom's River, I'm Lauren Wonko for NJ Today. And our Lauren Wonko is standing by live for us now in Bradley Beach. Lauren, you've spoken to so many people on that night, since that night, and, and tonight. Many gathered around you there right now. What's their state of mind? What are you hearing from them? Uh, many folks that I spoke with tonight, Mike, said that they really want to forget about this day. It's not something that they want to think about. And they're actually looking forward to this anniversary passing so that they can continue the long process of rebuilding. There's still so much ahead for so many folks. Are they satisfied with the way government has handled things? Absolutely not. So many people continue to complain about mountains of paperwork, fighting with insurance companies, fighting with FEMA. A lot of folks also mention that they see dozens of homes being bulldozed in their neighborhood, but yet they don't see a lot of reconstruction happening to take their place. The saddest part about all of this, I think, Mike, is that folks are asking themselves the same question tonight that they did a year ago, and that is, what's next? Where do I go from here? Good question indeed. Lauren Wonko, live for us tonight in Bradley Beach. Thank you, Lauren.